Well, hello there. Thanks for coming by. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Give me a follow. I much appreciate it. Now, here's a little bit of something you missed on uh, last week's episode of Real Garbage. You got to suspend your belief, I guess, or disbelief or whatever this is. Is it belief or disbelief? What am I suspending here? Your disbelief. Suspending my disbelief. Yeah, because you want it. You're believing. So you're, you're suspending not believing. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. Um, unless it's one of those. It's not a double negative. No. Uh-huh. All right. Uh-huh. I'm learning stuff. See, welcome to Real Garbage. You can learn stuff here. <laughs> Everyone's so, like, we knew that already. Everyone yeah. knew that already. Idiot. <laughs> How would you populate and control? How would you control the population of Canadians? And I'm like, two for one salesman. Buy one, get one free. Lure them into a big box store. Nerve gas. Take their keys. Move the cars. Keep the sale going. Dude, you're thinking too much, man. You just. <laughs> just we, put poison into double doubles, no, man. We just, lo- that, oh, they wow. have an automatic Ooh. machine. Just dump it in there. You're Ooh, good. Damn. That's yeah. even easier. Yeah. Yeah. How did he know it was exactly like the fuck? See, that's the whole thing. I didn't think he did. I thought they just randomly went, holy no, crap. No we way. just uncovered the iron That makes crap. me more Ooh, angry than it should. him. It should. Than him already <laughs> knowing impossibly. I get that. Because I'm just like, sure. It should. But if he didn't know, that makes me upset in my heart. Like oh, that. You doesn't just have. You don't find planes and old ironclads in the middle of Molly for just. It, 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 it made me angry. And now coming up on this episode of Real Garbage. I've never siphoned gas, so. Use a hose. Okay. Use a hose, and as soon as you get it like flowing, it hits your mouth. You you cap it, spit that out, and then you just put it in the gas can. And I would it, imagine you spit that out. It'll, well, well you I've never I've never tasted gas. You spit it into true. someone else's mouth. <laughs> Here you want some? <laughs> <laughs> At least I think I've siphoned gas once in my life, and once it gets flowing, it keeps going, which is the weirdest thing. I've done that with booze, like straining brandy that we were made homemade. Well, that was know. great. Same yeah. thing. But that you definitely. Oh yeah. That's going down. The house. You don't spit that in someone else's <laughs> mouth. I'm joined by my friend Dave Bosma to review the 2003 indie film Monster Man. I don't know about this one. It was uh, it was interesting to say the least, but uh, it wasn't that terrible, but it was still pretty bad. We're going to review it here on this episode of Real Garbage, so stick around. But first, we got a quick word from our fake sponsors. This episode of Real Garbage is brought to you by Monster Mo. Got yourself a small penis? Small penis right here. Well, come on down to Monster Motors and get yourself a monster truck. We got great deals and 0% financing for anyone who's had their face torn off and sewn back on by their inbred sister. That's Monster Motors. Use promo code. Wait, you can't use promo codes at a motor monster truck store. That doesn't make any sense. Come on down to Monster Motors and get a monster truck today. Free! Hello, everybody. Welcome to Real Garbage. Uh, I always say it's the number one something podcast, but I can't think of anything right now. Dave Bosma sitting across from me. How you doing, Dave? Pretty good, man. What's new? What's exciting? I haven't, uh, I've been wanting to get you on the show for a while. That's true. I've been wanting to get on the show yeah. for a while. What were we talking about before we started recording? I was like, hey, we should record this. Oh, well, just everything in the movie. And <laughs> we had some really great lines when we weren't, you know, on film. <laughs> Crap. It always <laughs> happens. I'm like, oh, man, we should be recording this. And we start talking. It's like, um, it was so natural. Now just do that again. Well, you know, it's a lesson <laughs> learned. I, I've told this anecdote a lot, but I, they were filming for the news at the airport a long time ago when I was a kid. There, because it was the new, you know, the new wing, right? The, back when the mm-hmm. Victoria Airport, when that was new, when they built that new whole section that kind of looks like wing. Anyways, we were coming back from I don't know Calgary or Winnipeg, and we walked in and they were greeting people, meeting people, and look at the new uh, wing of the airport. Isn't it so nice? And it was the news, and we came in. And, uh, you know, we said hi, I think, to my parents or whoever was waiting for us. And uh, and they were like, oh, that was great. Like, but can you go back? Because, you know, we didn't quite. And I was like, but this is the news. You know, I'm not I'm not <laughs> redoing my life for the news. Like, well, they expect we, you can, to... we can edit this, but that shouldn't be a show. You can know? you go like, back and walk a little slower? Like, yeah. you know, start doing a silly walk. Do you like hug your mom them? with more emotion? And <laughs> 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 Bear hugging her. Yeah, they're like, you don't really look good on camera. We're going to have to do something about this. <laughs> We're just going to frame up your feet. Could you just not look at the camera? Just pull, <laughs> pull your hood way down. 
We wanted the other guy behind you, actually. If you could just... <laughs> can you pretend to be... <laughs> Have you seen? Have you uh, watched any mo- like movies other than this one uh, lately? Uh, like, like any good ones? <laughs> Not, you know. I I used to watch more movies. I I guess uh, I don't make as much time for movies anymore. Hmm. I watch a lot of shit TV. I watch a lot of cooking TV. Well, that's um, that's fair because you enjoy cooking. I do, yeah. And I just I don't know, um, but it's just something that's on, and then I kind of like half-ass look at my phone at the same time, and then. <laughs> Maybe look up a place that I want to go or something, and then I'll get distracted. I kind of go down the rabbit hole on the phone while I watch the Food Network constantly. That's, that's, just, that's just life. Like now. sometimes you just yeah, you're like, what about all those you know feet uh, that showed up on the shores? And then I'd like get on my <laughs> phone because I'm like, that was weird. And I'm like, has that happened lately? And usually it comes down to is like, has it? You know, uh, not not lately that I've heard of in the news. When was that? When did but, that happen? That I've completely forgot about that. I don't know. I think we're up to like twelve now. But I think the thing with the news is like it, it does. It's not it, if there's no there's no story other than the feet. So they're kind of like, well, you know, and or or the police <laughs> or the, the police same are foot like the, twelve times. <laughs> the police know there's a serial killer, and they're like, don't say anything because we're trying to catch him. That's crazy. That's, that's kind of what happens with the news. I think. I don't know. She, Oh, I have easily. a cousin who is, he's he's uh, he's worked as an editor for the CBC for years. And so he knows. I think he's an editor. You know, whatever he works in for the CBC, he's been around for years. And he always said, like, he's like, well, new is in the news. So after a while, they kind of stop because you know, would say, I'd ask him, you know, naive questions like, why why are they not talking about like the nuclear reactor of Fukushima anymore? Like it's probably still leaking. So, but he's like, well, yeah, but nobody cares because now this happened and mm-hmm. something else blew up and somebody else died and. And the news is constantly giving us the newest news. That's an interesting way to put it. And it, yeah, that makes complete sense. I was thinking about this the other day. Like, how is that Fukushima reactor situation? Apparently, they just... Well, they, and so I brought this up because... Or, I, yeah, anyways, I just read, like, a couple of days ago that the, they just passed a vote where they're planning to dump a bunch of wastewater into the ocean. Like, oh. millions of millions. Like, they're like, well, I guess... I mean, I don't know. You know, you watch some people and they're like, well, we're all going to die in five years because there's, you know, radiation in the ocean. And other people are like, there's as much radiation coming from the sun as. Well, so, and, I, and we're, I'm, not, I'm not dead yet, and people aren't dying, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, it's not, you know, there's a pandemic, but we're not all dying of nuclear radiation. Like, it's true. That we know of. Well, we apparently <laughs> eat a credit card worth of plastic a week each. each yeah. I, I don't know how that works. Where's the plastic coming from? Like, is it in all of our food? Is it is it only if we're eating seafood? Because I don't eat a lot of fish. I don't. Yeah, I I don't believe it. I I Me you know, I don't be, like. I mean, you know, maybe I'm just stupid, but I feel pretty good most of the time. <laughs> so I feel like not much is wrong with my health. Or like, and someone's like, "Well, you shouldn't be doing this, or you should be." And it's like, yeah, but if I feel okay. You know, like if I'm gonna croak over tomorrow, I don't want to know. Mm-hmm. So let that fucking happen. I like, and your, like I like your outlook. But I'm, I'm, like I'm, your I'm not. I'm not this. labored. Breed. Like like sometimes I do like a lot of work at home, and I'm like, fuck. Like I think I'm out of shape. And it's like, but also you don't, you know, lift twenty wheelbarrows of dirt up into the yard every day. So you shouldn't expect it to kind of wind you a little bit. Maybe you don't. You know. <laughs> you want to talk about Monster Man? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> do I want to tell you? Actually, it wasn't a bad movie. It was. Uh, so it this, was a bad movie, but in that it was bad, it wasn't that bad. It I was intriguing. Was intriguingly pleasantly, bad. Pleasantly surprised. This was recommended by our mutual friend Jared. What's his last name? Don't know. Okay. J Rod. J Rod, the cook over at Brewski's Tap House in uh, Brentwood Bay, BC. For two years, two and a half years, he's been like since I started this podcast. He's like, you got to do this movie, Monster Man. Man, I can't do a good Jared impression. No one <laughs> get it anyway. You should do Monster Man. It's really good. Something like that. <laughs> He's like, just, just watch it. And I saw that the score was 50 50, 50 from the critics, 50 from the viewers. So I'm thinking, all right, this is going to be somewhere in the range of mediocre. And I was laughing. I was, it's, it's, the writing is a little silly, as we discussed earlier. But yeah, I was. You were saying, what did you say the budget was? Four million? Four million dollars. Yeah. So you know, 500 went to the writing. <laughs> $500 went to the writing. <laughs> that, 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 that. Truck, you, you know, know the, the no, you vehicle. Know how much that cost? The vehicle was probably twenty five hundred dollars. That vehicle was twenty five hundred. So there's only about seven points of trivia on this movie. Oh, okay. The monster truck cost twenty five hundred dollars. It's made of wood panels painted to look like steel. 
there was no place to sit inside. There was just two levers to steer it. It couldn't go faster than 20 to 30 miles per hour, and it couldn't run for longer than 30 minutes or it would overheat. So that's why all the shots where you saw the truck were sped up. So it was like, like it, I noticed it looked a little janky, and I was like, what the hell is wrong with it? And then I looked it up, and it was like, oh, it's all sped up. That makes sense, because it looked like CGI at first. And I was like, well, they spent $2,500 on this truck. It's not CGI. Interesting. Yes, so we reviewed the 2003 movie Monster Man. You can find the full movie on YouTube. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick little description of what this movie is about. Monster Man is a movie about uh, two friends, Harley and Adam, that are on their way to their ex-friend Betty Ann's wedding. And along the way, they lip off some rednecks and they get terrorized by a man in a monster truck. That's pretty much it. It's pretty much yeah, yeah. It was pretty pretty. And, well, and then but then the love interest tries to kill him. <clears throat> well, there's yeah, there's a hitchhiker that is uh, to, picked up to, because she's trying to rebuild her brother. You, you know what? Like <laughs> as shitty as it was, that end got me. I was like, what? No, really? I was. They completely got me it, at the point where I was questioning whether I should hang on and. Uh, <laughs> say, well, okay, you know. it's the last eight minutes. Yeah. So exactly. So this movie starts right off with, okay, I just had it playing again when you showed up here because I wanted to kind of get a little refresher. I watched it last night. We start off with a, a shot of some dude just getting his head crushed. Like right off the bat, they start with a gory, head-crushing scene, blood out of the mouth. And I was like, whoa, okay, I'm, I'm into it. I could watch this. I haven't watched it. I hadn't watched a good gory horror movie in a while. Like yeah, it wasn't. I mean, they, and obviously the you know they didn't have the money for that. Like it's a lot of like quick shots. Well, and four and so four million dollars. Yeah. Like they. But what have I seen? I've seen that before. The uh, it's not new. The uh, head crushing in the butt. They probably did it in Saw, like one or two Saw. or three or four or five, yeah. <laughs> five. eight. All those. I, I feel like it was a gangster movie. I saw it in for some reason. Ooh, well, I thought they was gonna maybe be like a... maybe a Tarantino. I still can't. I have a hard time watching the razor scene and. Uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. The, um, Stuck in the middle, in the middle with you. you. <laughs> hey, can you hear me? Hello. I watched it on TV the other day. It is like an edited version. That always cracks me up when they do. You oh. know, it's like that. You can't really if you take the the Tarantino out of Tarantino, it really loses a lot of punch. You know, you it's it's like they couldn't. You couldn't. You can't edit a Tarantino movie. You can't censor a Tarantino movie. You just can't. No, I mean he's a white guy who. Uh, gets black actors to say the N word, <laughs> you know, that's pretty like when black people were like, you know what? You're cool enough. I'm going to let that whole thing slide because it fits with the story. That's you know, like, I don't think it actually be understated how could like, I mean, I would, you know, I just made the choice not to say it because we're doing it here. Like, it's like, I'm that's not, fair. No, I'm not going there. Like, we, forget hey, that. We're edgy. We're not that edgy, but, <laughs> Quentin Tarantino, you know, I mean, Samuel L. Jackson isn't here to back me up. <laughs> so, this is one tasty burger. <laughs> is, he's great. He's, I mean, he's written the best roles for him. He's, uh, my, um, I was just talking about this with someone the other night, the, uh, in uh, Django Unchained. He's the meanest, like, he's the most terrible guy in the whole film, in a way, like, especially psychologically. Oh, yeah. absolutely, because he's, like, on the side of the white people. <laughs> just... just, that was probably too good of a movie to talk about while we're trying to, we should just talk yes, about yes. this. Back, this to this hor- back to this, this, this horribly <laughs> excellent movie. So we start off, we're introduced to Adam. He is driving to the wedding of Betty Ann, his old love interest, friend of 10 plus years, who he was in love with, is still in love with, and he finds out that uh, his buddy Harley's in the back seat hiding with a mask on, scares the crap out of him. And we learn very quickly that, oh, these two used to be really good friends. What You know what? I like this friendship between these two. It was, well, the, sorry, the lack thereof. It was, it was believable for me. I kind of thought when I watched, because I watched it like two days ago, and uh, I was like, I came up with like, as usual, all these things that I came up with that I was going to, I'd be like, I'll talk about this. I'll say that, you know, maybe I should write some stuff down. I didn't do yeah, any coming of that in at with all. No notes. No Dave. notes. Wow. But um, I, right away, I was like, this is, this is, it's a buddy movie. Mm-hmm. Really, at the end, like, I mean, horror movie aside, it's a, it's a, there's a static buddy who's, you know, this Joker. Adam. And then there's at, is oh, that sorry. Adam? No. Well, at, like, you say, when you say static, like, I think of like, Static is a guy that doesn't like in a classic story. There's a person that doesn't change, right? And then usually ah, the yeah, protagonist yeah, yeah. changes. The protagonist gotcha. is Adam, yes. right? The nerdy buddy, and I can't remember this guy's name. Harley. Harley. Yeah. yeah. 
he, I mean, he's still kind of the same asshole at the same, at the end. Like, do you know what I mean? In oh, the yes. last scene, he's, <laughs> he's got blood all over his face and he's still just this rude dick. Contact like he the Academy, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> yeah, he's over the top. He's great. Like, you know, you gotta, you gotta give it to the guy that acted him. He, he overacted him to save it. Like, <laughs> well, and he did it. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't too much. Like it, it no, was a no. lot, but I was like, he's not overdoing it, and it's a believable, believable performance. I have people that I know who I thought of when I saw. <laughs> oh, we all know that person. Yeah. We all know that person. Yeah, <laughs> your buddy who's like every is just like, yeah, man, let's do it, dude, dude. Just talking. I, you know what? I I feel like I can be that person sometimes, or I used to be. Not anymore. I'm a little more subdued now. I'm that person when they talk about the idea, and then if they call me, I'm like, "Yeah, maybe next time." <laughs> yeah. Listen, be- it's like it's like eight thirty. You know, <laughs> I gotta go to bed soon. Oh uh, yeah, it's like Wednesday. You know, and I don't go out. Yeah, we don't do it on a weekday. Come on. So yeah, they um, they're headed to the wedding. This is so they're you know he hops back in the car. He's like, oh, "Okay, fine, you can tag along with me." He had to because he wasn't gonna leave him there in the middle of the but desert. We, we talked about this too because it's weird because later on. L- can't remember what part that happens at, but he says, I can't believe I invited you on this trip as though like, Oh, this is like minutes later. I think he mentions it a couple yeah. times. Yeah. yeah he Which basically is, so forces he was himself surprised, into his car. <laughs> but actually he did. So uh, yeah, it's obviously they kind of overlooked the uh, continuity in the script. <laughs> uh, it's been recently. We've, I've watched a few movies where you also, have to suspend your disbelief and go, okay, this is, we just got to skip over trying to justify that. And if any of your friends, you know, <laughs> tried to choke you in a Jason mask while you were driving down the road, no matter where you were headed, you would probably, I don't know. I don't have any friends that are that I'm that good with that. I would continue to let them ride in my car. I'd be like, you know, man, you need to fuck off. It would, like, yeah. You could like the jump scare would be okay. So really, the mask and choking might be a little too much. Yeah, it's not usually. Yeah. You scare me in the backseat. All right. I'm going to forgive you eventually. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not going to leave one of my friends stranded on the side of the road. Like, all right, get in the car. There, we're in the desert, legitimately. We got, and it's you have to have a story. We understand. Yeah, there's writing. You know, you can't just. That no, would be the end of the movie. The car. Just fuck leave. you. Credits. Get out of my car. <laughs> Credits roll. What? And what? the rest. Of the, he just drives to the wedding, confesses his love, and she's like, "I don't care. I'm getting in and married anyway." You know? Yeah. Like, get out of here, bud. <laughs> Why'd you come here? <laughs> Well, that would be that would be a great movie because it's always the the movie about the guy and then he confesses his love and then she doesn't know. It'd be a great movie to just like and then kind of follow it from there. Like his, he just his tragic depression, his just, alcoholic drive back through. Oh, the he southern just stays States at and, the wedding and just makes it awkward. <laughs> Fucks the <laughs> bridesmaids. Just totally does his transformation at the wedding. Grabs the microphone during the speeches. Gives a big fucking speech. Fights the, <laughs> fights the groomsman. Whatever is it, Timmy? I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. Where's the punch bowl? Yeah. Just gets hammered at the open bar. That that will be the movie we'll make. We'll, I like that idea. It's yeah. pretty sweet. <laughs> we should do our version. Yeah, the takeoffs of what would have happened as a comedy, kind of Larry David esque. Well, really, just uh, just boom, boom, <laughs> boom. <laughs> well, it's on record now, so I'll uh, I'll write it down as I'm editing. So yeah, th- we get a little bit a backstory of how these two used to be friends and uh, how Adam's a real wussy. I do like man again. Oh, watch- that was a, oh. That, that dated it for me. I was like, just this whole wussy. You know, you're wussy, man. Well, this, dude, was, you're a, wuss- this was dude, a 2003 movie. All those movie. times you helped her out, and she didn't ever give you. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Like, man, yeah, because like you helped her study. So he wrote papers, all the yeah. term papers, and he's like nothing back. It's like, dude, you you were giving her a lot. I could have, you know, yeah. I don't think that would have gotten any action. This nerd should have been aware that he was being used. Well, <laughs> he should have been. Hopefully, you know, but he voluntarily would have been like, you do that anyway, you know, if you like a girl when mm. you're, especially when you're young, yeah. if you like it, you're basically should be like, can you, you know, take my backpack for me while I walk home with my boyfriend and then just drop it off at my house and wait there. Well, when you see me coming, leave and you'll be like, okay. yeah, okay. You know, just, just to be able to smell Maybe you. she'll, you know, maybe she'll pick me cause I'm nice. Oh yeah. Nice guys <laughs> never win. No. Never. <laughs> Till we get older. Then it's all the women want. Is, is it? Really? I don't know. 
I don't, I don't know. I'm 46 and I don't know what we want, but I'm fine with it. My girlfriend seems to like me, so that's cool. That See? can change on a daily basis. So that's just, that's just that's just life. Or right? hourly, depending on the di- you know. But <laughs> <laughs> so Adam's a wussy. Oh wait, hold on. When he's making fun of him, did you ever have a little black book? Because he's uh, like, you use little black books for babes numbers, but you use it to write your gas mileage. No, no, I I I bought one once. My dad legit laughed at me. He's like, "What do you got that for?" I'm like, "What's well, for phone numbers?" He's like, "Yeah, right." I had oh. books. I was like, um, you know, uh, gonna be a poet when I was like, I was. I read pretty early on, like not. Um, I I was reading like Jack Kerouac at age fourteen, and like I even read Nietzsche. Like I didn't quite get. You know, I, I read know it later. I still things. don't get it. I tried. You know, the philosophy. I read all the philosophy. And then I just couldn't, I was like, I'm done. Like, that's it. it doesn't, I don't care. Hmm. It doesn't matter. Like, I, I literally, I read all the, from like 14 to 22. And I could, even later, probably. And I swear to God, I, I absorbed it all. And all that, like, in the self help and like Osho Rajneesh and Deepak Chopra, but also like the philosopher guys and Kant and Descartes. And I don't know. I just, I don't. I, I, <laughs> Now I don't give a fuck. Like I don't care who's right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter every day that I'm alive. It doesn't matter from one second to the next. So I don't. I left all that behind. But uh, I can't even remember where it's going with this. I lost. It. We, we go on tangents. We were talking about um, little black book. Little black book. Yeah. So I had a lot of books that I wrote stuff in. And so if I if I we didn't really like cell phones weren't even like I'm not old old but I'm like I'm 46 so like. You know, there wasn't even computers in high school till I was like fifteen, and then, oh, <laughs> like cell phones was later. Yeah, fifteen. Like they they were there, but they were just starting. Like we we had to take turns on the computer at high school, and uh, like smartphones and all that all came later. Dude, that was like yeah. two thousand five, two thousand seven. So I think you, I got my you, first iPhone. But if you got a number, you kind of mm. got like a girl's number at her house that probably your parents answered to. It was more. Oh yeah. You wouldn't. You know, yeah, numbers weren't as much of a thing. So I didn't, and what, like, yeah, no, I didn't, I mean, books for writing, but not, uh, <laughs> there, there might have been one or two in there if there was. You know? I just remember my dad laughing at me for that black book. I was so, <laughs> so, so crushed. I was very, uh, my parents had no idea about, my older brother brought home every girl that he ever dated, which was, was kind of endearing in a way, in, in retrospect, you know. Mm. But I saw that, and I was like, nobody's going to know nothing about my life. <laughs> <laughs> no one will know. So they thought I was gay, like, till I was, like, I think till I was living with my first girlfriend. They were like, no, 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 he might, <laughs> might be gay, but we don't know. We just... <laughs> That old school mentality. Well, we haven't seen his girlfriend, so he must be gay. <laughs> Thanks, mom and dad. <laughs> so it's in a poetry. You know, it's like I mean, the signs are all there. <laughs> yeah, he wants to be a poet. He wants to write poet. girls' numbers in the black book. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they're going back and forth in the car. He's calling him a wussy, and then we see we get our first glimpse of the hearse. This creepy hearse pulls up, rides next to him for a little while, and brrr, takes off, and then we cut to the diner. And this is where this idiot is like. You're in the middle of what? What state were they in? Any idea? Oh no! But it was in the he. Yeah, he's talking about it. Well, his buddy is an instigator, right? Mm-hmm. He starts calling out rednecks out loud, and because they're a, watching a, monster trucks, and he's like, "Look at these rednecks watching these monster trucks!" Blah blah blah. I'm like, "You're gonna get yourself killed here, guys!" It's in the middle of nowhere. And this monster truck just comes ri- like ripping up behind him, and it looks so funny because it's because yeah, like we said, it's twenty five hundred bucks. Well, Think it of, doesn't. It doesn't look. It doesn't look scary as a vehicle. Kind of kind of looks like an ant's head. Like yeah, it's a weird. It's not something like I would describe it as benign and cute like a kid's toy, except that it's, you know, bigger than the car. Like from our angle, it didn't. It's just a weird, you know, and then and then it's so big with its monster wheels that it easily could have driven over and it just kind of bumps into him. Well, he's got this big ram on the front. So I guess this guy has obviously done this for a while. Like it seems like he's a seasoned vet with that monster truck towards, you know, terrorizes a lot of people. Well, they get into that, don't they? (laughs) They get into it because then there are other characters that they meet, and there's the guy with the torn off arm, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, well, it's, they, a, it's. We learn down the road that it's, it's a demon of some sort, is what they what they. Oh yeah, think that's right. Is. He's a demon because of satanic magic, because of the implication. So they get run off the road, and here I wasn't sure if their car because the car just slides off to the side. They don't mention they run out of gas. They got they have a little fight montage, then all of a sudden they're just walking, 
I thought the fight montage montage was was hilarious. These well, two play do, fighting was pretty funny. But they run out of gas, like they. Did they say it though? Yeah, yeah, because he's like out of gas. Oh, I know I he kind of like, and it's dark. Like that that happens in movies all the time, though, right? It's light, and all of a sudden it's dark. And it's like pff, out of gas. <laughs> oh. This was another one where they're like, "Well, just people will believe it." They run out of gas. They find this van. He's like, "Oh, I'm gonna siphon it out with this straw and this bottle." He starts sucking the septic oh, yeah. tank out. Spitting it in there, and Adam's like, "That's the septic tank." And, I'm like, "That is nasty." First of all, Girl nobody, siphon, nobody siphons gas like that. But it, in the meantime, there's a headless corpse in this van. I've and never we get siphoned a, gas, so use a hose. Okay, you use a hose, and as soon as you get it like flowing, it hits your mouth. You you cap it, spit that out, then you just put it in the gas can. And I would imagine you spit that out. It'll, it'll, well, well you I've never you I've never tasted gas. You spit it into true. someone else's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Here you want some? <laughs> At least I think I've siphoned gas once in my life. And once it gets flowing, it keeps going, which is the weirdest thing. I've done that with booze, like straining brandy that we were homemade. Well, that was go. great. Same yeah. thing. But that, you definitely... Oh, yeah. That's going down the hatch. You don't spit that in someone else's <laughs> mouth. Yeah, and, I mean, that would be cool, you know, under the right <laughs> circumstances. So they're, 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 they're driving again. They get the gas in the car. They're driving again. They uh, This is where they start... Trace. Yeah, I don't even know what they're talking about. Rosebud or something. Rosebud. Then they like holy the shit. The rosebud thing. That's where I started to get intrigued. That was. It was kind of funny because the I don't know if you watched. I have never seen Citizen Kane. Okay, it's a. I know it's num- should, the number one movie you know, of all time. Now speaking of that's a thing to do. Like if you're talking about getting high, watching classic movies is. I wasn't, but it could be. It's necessary in a way now because I feel that the pacing. It, you need to be kind of slowed down because we're so kind of on all the time. And uh, if you want to watch like Ingmar Bergman movies, you need to chill the fuck out, right? You it's, like, it's like watching Scarface now. You need to be high for that as well. That's, that's a yeah, long drawn out. I feel like that's tradition. though. I feel like if you aren't getting high, like that's kind of like, you know, I don't know. That's be going to like uh, Mississippi and not having barbecue. Like you're watching Scarface, you get fucking high. You got to do some coke because you can. Because then you mimic it. You're like, <laughs> say hello okay. to my little friend. You know, that's okay. I, that is great. You know, like I know Al Pacino. He's been uh, character like the, everybody does an impression of him now. You know, and he's been saturated. <sighs> but <laughs> that's that's Mama. the later. That's the later one, right? I, which is great. You know, <laughs> greatest. Why'd I get mixed up with that bitch? Because she got a great ass. <laughs> but the early, he's he's genius in it. It's pure and uh, and he's it's very um, yeah, it's it's good. It's some good fucking movie making. I told you to tell him you were in a sanitarium. <laughs> I told him I was in sanitation. <laughs> I told him, told you to tell him you were in a sanitarium. And that so, guy ain't no kill no fucking kid, man. I ain't gonna kill no fucking kids. Fuck you. Fuck you, man. <laughs> It's so intense. It's, I want to so take drive. I want to take drive it like that would be great. As Al Pacino gave drive, just feel like slow the fuck down, man. <laughs> You're tailgating. Stop tailgating. Fucking slow down. Two seconds of follow distance, huh? Two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you can't anyway. see through the windshield because your windshield is polluted. <laughs> it's true. Got to turn your turn signal on. You want to go left? That's down. Not right. It's right as up. Up right. Down left. Hooah! Hooah! <laughs> Great ass! <laughs> um, yeah, so they see the hitchhiker here, and they're like, oh man, this is your chance. Because this kid's a virgin. Adam's a virgin. we got to know this. Oh yeah, that's right. A, that's Adam's an important a, yes. point, is that he's a virgin. And yeah. Harley's trying to get him laid. So he's like, oh my God, look at this smoking hot chick. First of all, she's not dressed for the desert. <laughs> she's not sunburned at all. So you know she hasn't been out there for that long. She looks way too happy to be hitchhiking on the side of the road. I should have known something was up, but I didn't. So it worked. She tricked me. That's, you know. Totally got me. You're just a guy. What can yeah. you expect? You, yeah. I mean, all of us. I saw that belly button ring. We'd was all like, be oh. dead. You, me, <laughs> yeah. most guys that I know, we'd, we're dead. Yep. We'd be like, yep, that seems like a good idea. Yeah, let's, let's pick her up. She'll probably go for We've already us. had three scary things happen to us. <laughs> Clearly, this seems safe. Things are looking up. <laughs> she's cute, though. But, bro, she's cute. That's the thing. Is she yeah. could, you'd be like, she might murder me, but, but if not, she though. doesn't. Yeah. Oh, time of your life, bro. <laughs> Bet she does anal. <laughs> so anyway, they, they blast past her. They go to this bathroom, and he stops in the most disgusting bathroom I've ever seen in my life. It's like, it's, so he's, he's like, there's no way I'd take a shit in that bathroom. 
like he's sanitizing it, and I'm like, oh no, just just shit in the sink and run. Yeah, I no that that's too much. I mean, you well, you know, but when you gotta go, you're also in the desert. The whole desert's a toilet, really. Like, yeah, go lean up against it. You know, maybe yeah. not, maybe not a cactus. Once again, find also, a good rock. It, well, an important part of the story would not have happened if he didn't go to the washroom. Yeah, that's true. I guess we got another. I guess lead. another. It's not really like his friend comes in there, which is you know. <laughs> Kind of weird, but you know, not unsurprising for. Well, no, Harley's sleeping in the car because, like, he goes to leave the monster but truck. Doesn't pulls Harley up. come in later? Because or no, no who does Harley end goes up and being coming in. Harley goes and pisses in the monster man's truck. Oh yeah, which is hilarious. So monster man pulls up there and he goes, you know, the, Adam walks out of the bathroom, sees the truck, and goes, huh, and runs back into the disgusting bathroom, which is like the worst decision. Just run around the building. And then that's when he locks himself in the stall, and Monster Man comes in and starts shaking the door repeatedly, like and like at least speak up and be like, "Occupied, somebody's in here." And then guy goes, oh, and goes into the next stall. Oh yeah, but I thought maybe he would think he's going to kill him though. Is he? Oh, I don't know. Maybe he was there for the Friday 3 p.m. fun to the glory hole. That's what I was expecting. I'm like, oh, maybe this guy's into some weird shit because <laughs> he he did push <laughs> the toilet paper back through and then look at it. He's like, well, who's in there? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So he, but he didn't put his penis in there. <laughs> Adam gets out, runs, and meanwhile, I'm kind of dis- <laughs> you know, of all the like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just you know have that kind of luck, but I've I've never seen any sign of a glory hole Neither in any I. sort of public washroom ever. You know, and I wasn't really looking for it, <laughs> but you would think it would kind of be like, you know, you got to stumble upon probably, one. That's probably proof that you know. Porn is a bad influence on men's minds because I I feel like I'm like, but you would think at least one, right? And it's like, no, dude, they're all videos that someone makes. Yeah, I've driven with, across Canada halfway. I've stopped at a lot of gas stations. I haven't seen anything. It's all bullshit. It's all a lie. It's all bullshit. We should do a, a cross Canada review of the the because you know when they were talking about COVID at first and they were recommending glory holes, we should drive across and be like, there's none. We looked for them. Welcome you know. to gas stations, diners, and glory holes <laughs> on this episode we travel across the country in search for the most glorious bathroom stall holes available we didn't find any i'm guy fieri <laughs> welcome you're, you're in flavor town you're in cocktown <laughs> new this fall on tlc glory has a face and it's guy fieri Ride shotgun with Guy as he cruises across the country in search of the most popular diners, the best gas stations to fill up at, and the best glory holes on the highway. Let Guy do the work for you, so all you have to do on your next road trip is pull up, then pull down those pants and stick that dick in the glory hole. Or if you prefer, service someone else on the other side. You're headed to Flavortown on gas stations, diners, and glory holes. Coming this fall on TLC. So they stop at a hotel, and this is where they're, uh, they discover on the news that the van that they saw had a headless corpse in it. And they're like, oh, man, we should call the cops. And Harley's like, there's, there's no point. So they said they just go to oh, bed. Yeah. And he wakes up with, oh, this, this is scene. great. You have notes. I'm remembering the movie as you're telling this me. This is perfect. So you, I get your genuine, like, oh, yeah, your realizations. Uh, Adam wakes up with his hand in a dead cat, which is just gross. And he, like, ah, freaks out, throws the cat onto Harley's chest. Meanwhile, Harley's having a sex dream because he's like, yeah, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. And then he's like, ooh, you want to eat your pussy? And he's like, yeah, it was just so gross. Like the graphic wound on the dead cat as he's like, ah. And he start, I'm like, no, I'm screaming at the TV. Don't. Don't let him do it. Ah. And he's, ah, he's right in there. I'm like, ah. like this movie made me gag at least three times. And then he wakes up and he's like, ah, throws the cat away and they book it. They just leave underwear. I don't think they have anything with them. Jump in the car and take off. And there's the hitchhiker <clears throat> just chilling out in the back of the car. She's like, oh, sorry, guys. I uh, decided to sleep in your car. I'm like, oh, what? yeah. What? That's, that's right. I kind of glossed over there for a minute when I was, and then, yeah, then she's just there. Which doesn't make sense because Adam is such a prude. Remember when Harley's like, you have the club for your car and you got low jack. But when you lose it, <clears throat> there's no way this kid would have left his doors unlocked. <clears throat> so another uh, plot inconsistency. Yes. That we, uh, yeah. But I, but, but by that like, point, you're so invested in the thing happening, you kind of you're like, that's fine. Yeah, I didn't realize until right now. Actually, that's like, like oh, all yeah. the you know all those plot inconsistencies are like the waivers that they get you to agree to when you're clicking through shit that you want. I agree. And, I agree. I read like, yeah, 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 whatever. Yes. Just give me the thing. Yeah, just yeah, you know, sure. Just, but I I got to kick take I gotta, my soul. <laughs> you know. 
Well, man, just think like someday the, all those terms of service that we've signed on to. What if in the fine print in the middle somewhere it's like, and you agree for like when we're, we show we show up and we take your firstborn. Like, well, you signed the agreement. Give us your kid. So oh, all crap. of them basically are like we we're just waiting for the uh, AI to take over because in some of it it's it's somewhere it says that it owns you and then AI is just gonna come into and there's just you know you're gonna be like. You're like you're part me it's now. The neural, you're, it's the neural link, man. That's coming. Neural. I think no. Have no you, but see, I see. I think Elon's not. You know, he's he was he he does it AI and all that, but he's not into like he's he's telling them you guys are doing it too fast. Like he's a pretty cautious guy. He more wants to have your like have your ear figure out how to repair itself, which is cool. You know, I don't. I know a lot of people. He's not one of the people that I have conspiracy theory. I don't think Elon. I don't think he's evil. No, I think I he's think just like, evil. I don't re- like, I mean, well, somebody's evil. So if anybody's evil, Putin's <laughs> definitely evil, oh, absolutely. but he knows it and he doesn't give a fuck. He's kind of like, what are you going to do? Like I poisoned of my, of course I'm know. evil, my friend. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I, so come on. You, you would, you would know. Yeah. Like it, it's not a secret in, the, in Russia. They, bra- you know, just like you know. in Russia, a car drive you. <laughs> Then you drive car. Uh, yeah, so they pick her up <clears throat> and uh, they just leave. And then they're at another bar here. And this is where it's like limbless people. And I'm thinking, are they in a veteran bar? Like, is that what it is? That's what it seemed like at first. Because I was like, there's a lot of people with missing stopping on a Stopping at a lot of bars for driving. <laughs> hey, guys. This is a... Can we just get some food to go? It's our, also our... really popular in 2003. Not really. And again, this guy's, again, this Harley guy's just lipping off the people there, talking way too loud. I'm like, dude, you didn't learn anything from getting shot, chased by a monster truck before. Maybe don't talk about the locals. But no, he just keeps on beacon. I kind of thought maybe at that point he was the guy. Oh, and this is where the the daytime rapist shows up and is like, you want to dance? Wasn't talking to you. How about we go dance in the back of my truck? Like, whoa, dude. Easy. Oh, yeah. that. Oh yeah. And she's like, you see these hands? This was smooth. You see these hands? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, now watch my foot. Wham! And kicks him in the nuts. I was like, damn. That's pretty smooth, actually. Yeah, that was good. You just got beat up by a girl. You got knocked the fuck out. And then they take <laughs> off again. Yeah, well, this and, is they, they, and, and this is, but they have the whole wussy uh, thing in front of her to her nearby. And this is like where she now kind of. She's fake like, sleeping. Yeah. And she like, uh, yeah, she fake sleeps. And then he grabs He's her like, tit because buddy. Oh, oh, grab, she won't even know. Yeah. And then uh, he makes Adam do it. And she's like, and then, mm, yeah. Adam, oh, you're so sweet. But then she wakes up and she says, like, who, what, what is it? The, oh, who, yeah, they're, they're in the car and he's better? like, you're a wussy. No, you're a wussy. You are, you are, you are. And she's like, what's going on? And then it cuts the outside the car and it's like, you're trying to, you guys are fighting over which one I find more attractive. Yeah. And she's like, I'm just going right. to go find another car to hitchhike with. And yeah. She goes to leave. And then they apologize. They're like, no, come here. <laughs> which is fun, like, because there's been no, like, there's always people at these bars. But there's no one on the highway but them <laughs> and the monster. <laughs> you know, so I mean, these people obviously never leave, but there's no other car. So I don't know where she's going to get a ride to. Although we don't, we still don't know. And admittedly, at this point, I hadn't picked up yet that she was yeah. the, the killing sister. Yeah. So I, just, I, I, yeah. I, 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 there's a part of me that was like, uh, I'm sure there's something. But again, we're dudes. And I'm just like, man, whatever. She's. Good morning, Once sister. again, they were like, she is hot, though. Adam, Adam gets laid. He loses his virginity. Adam does get laid. She does a little Yoda Was that right talk, then, or was is, that a little bit... Uh, it was like the next scene. They get, they get a hotel. It was the next scene, they get yeah. a hotel, and then, uh, yeah, he's, this is when she's like, well, I'm not looking for anything serious. I just want a little fling. So it's good, because part of her ritual for the satanic worship was she had to take his virginity. That's right. She's it's a weird... There's a weird... that When they came to that, I was like, that's a very specific well, and difficult list he to had fulfill. To, he had to will... Let's see if I can remember this. He had to willfully walk into a pentagram, which he did. <laughs> that had the van in the middle. Right. He had to lose his virginity to her. That happened. There was another one. He had to eat... Yeah, yep. human flesh. Right? Well, spoiler Which alert. Is, that was the soup, I don't or know is how. that a little later? It was, the, it was a little later. Oh yeah, yeah. But like, I don't know how he didn't notice that there was a fucking eyeball and a tooth in it. But he's like, "Whoa, oh, hair! Look at that! Oh my god, there's human parts in my chili. It's right <laughs> in front then, of you." <laughs> I love it. Uh, 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 it was like the never-ending uh, tendon coming out of uh, his throat. Uh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the monster man. Oh, that's right, because the monster man at night kills the rapist. We just cut to him running through the, the grass, and all of a sudden, the monster man runs him over. Then he crushes him, and that's where it is. This, the scene the next day, 
I believe because oh yeah, because Adam had called the cops at one point. He called the cops and it's like I phoned. The oh, cops. he called. He said, I told him the cops to on. tell him what was going yeah. on, even though his buddy said no, it's not going to. Yeah, yeah. He's it like, is this going to take us off off course? This is going to be a waste of time. Yeah, because they're still trying to get to the. This isn't like they're still trying to get, to, still the trying to, get to the wedding. They still have a destination. Like, you ever watch that movie? Uh, Very bad things. It's got um, Christian Slater in it. And Ooh. a bunch of kind of all those other dudes from that era. Keith for Keith and, Sutherland. Uh, and, and I think um, like Will Arnett, maybe. Hmm. Um, not Keith, but uh, they, so <laughs> dudes go on a bachelor party to Vegas. Uh, there's cocaine. And then uh, they, they, one dude is having sex with the stripper. And like there's a, there, for some reason, there's like a spike, you know, fixture on the wall, you know, Uh-oh. like a lamp that's a spike. Whatever. She, he impales her. She's dead. And then, you know, they're all high. And of course, the smart idea is like we should chop up the body <laughs> and get rid of the, because, you know, like that seems like a good idea, right? Because nobody knows she's there. Yeah, you know. But uh, so, anyways, then uh, there's like, you know, the, the, the bellboy guy comes up, you know, and they kill him because he sees the dead. <laughs> and, you know, and then they all, they find a way to get, they clean it all up. They leave Vegas. They will never speak about this. And then, you know, people start melting down because they talk about how they find these bodies in Vegas and it's at someone's wedding. Then one of the guys drives the, tr- the truck into the other guy and kills him. And all along, <clears throat> sorry for some. I need that yeah, you glass of water, water in a second. I will have some more. Um, you know, it just keeps getting like, it's so obvious. Like people would know by now that you'd all murdered these people and, and it gets so ridiculous and it's just, they don't like, how could it keep progressing along this line? Why would you be going to this wedding at this point after all this has happened? You'd, you'd, I'd be, a, I'd be like, you know what? She can get married. That's what, plus he got laid. Anyways, my point being was like, why are they still going to the wedding? <laughs> Well, even you would kind of have. Uh, well, Harley even does ask him. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because Harley has professed his love for Betty Ann because he admitted that he slept with oh, her back yeah. in the day, which is why he was bad mouthing her so much. Because he's like, I wanted we you to fucking whole, hate her. Of course, because that's what your buddy does is yeah. talks about, hey, girlfriend's kind of a slut. She's a piece of shit. Here she wants to do person. other dudes like me. Yeah, <laughs> is what I he's trying. He's like, I hear that I want to do her, is what he's trying to say. It's like, yeah, you know, I heard, I saw her talking. To that guy, you know, because they like, while well, they both want to profess their love to, because he's like, well, I might as well throw my hat in the ring while we're doing this at her wedding. Just a dick move. It's kind of funny though. Which would be an even better. We <laughs> talk. So the two guys are going, and she just tells them both. She's like, "Fuck off, you psychos!" She gets two them arrested, <laughs> and then the rest is their buddy movie on their denouement trip through hell Dude, back to wherever a, they. This is a great idea. <laughs> It's great. We idea. should do. We could be we could write in that. the. I've always thought it'd be fun. Like, I mean, that's why I'm not an actor because I, you know, like <laughs> I, I worked, you know, at jobs where I had to hire people, and you know, they're like, oh, I always thought it'd be fun to do this job, and you're like, I'm not hiring you. Like, this isn't. It's not fun. This it's work. Well, you like you can have fun at work, but you, which is why I know I'm not meant to be an actor because I'm like, it would be fun to be an actor. Like, I should try that someday. It is, but fun. really, you know, I probably it probably is, but I mean, it's all the, um, you know years of not being successful or known and living off of nothing that oh, the, I, the I'm reject, just like the rejection. if I could just bypass all that and be famous as an actor and you know have some credibility that would be perfect for See, me that's exactly the way I used to think which is why I'm not a working actor right now <laughs> Shit. so I do really this because just... I mean you know I'm pretty cool I should just automatically be famous the moment I open my mouth tomorrow right is yeah, that fuckers that's <laughs> hire me hire me I'm perfect you guys made the mistake not me we need you aud- to audition mm, that ain't gonna happen uh, <laughs> so this is where we meet one arm Willie who uh, comes knocking on the window I like, just did you, audition you are next like what that's what your hood says oh you yeah are right. you are next on and your this hood guy, this guy looked like Dave Grohl it wasn't Dave Grohl though but he gives him the whole description of like this guy drives a monster truck, and he's a demon, and he chops off all our limbs for some reason that we can't figure out, which that's, we'll find out later. Yeah, that's right. That's when we get the big reveal now. We get all the explanation, because this is like, we're about, uh, I think this is like 45, 50 minutes into the hour and a half long movie. And this is, so after this, they, they go drive and they find this quaint little waterside cafe, and they order some food, and this is where he eats a bowl of human chili. Ugh. That's right. That's the chili moment. That's what I wanted to just quit. You know, so I tried watching a bit of this. I started at work, right, and then 
I was like, I got to, you know, I, I didn't have time, so I, I paused it. And then, you know, I was able to watch, I probably, I would have had a hard time, I think, paying attention. And I obviously haven't remembered. <laughs> but so I write, so it I was because my girlfriend took a nap, I was able to watch like the rest of the movie. And I was glad I watched as a whole from then. Oh, yeah. The human chili part. Uh, oh, was just that it's such a great like it was low budget but just so it was impressive he just kept pulling it out it, and out and out I was, it was gagging at that scene it literally made, I, I like oh, I was looking away because it was it was like well done it it's, was pretty gross you know like it's, I've seen worse movies than this definitely like I mean I you know I, I'm not gonna judge it on par with like good movies I'm gonna put it with all the stinker but fun movies it's, it's not up there with tr- uh, Troll 2 but not as bad as Troll Two. Well, and even like like even a movie like Spaceballs. Like oh, yeah. I mean, it was funny when I when I was first watched it when I was young and still kind of high. And it is, but it's not good. No, like it's not. <laughs> the script isn't much better than that. <laughs> and like John Candy's in that, you know. Like, Barf. <laughs> that's my name. Right? <laughs> I'm a mom. Yeah. yeah, and that's so. Isn't it right after he? Because isn't the chili the last one, and then she has his? Yeah, solar. so it's it's chili, <coughs> and then they hop back in the car, and they don't notice the dead body sitting in the back seat, and they oh, get chased yeah. by Monster Man here. And this is like, this was then a they killer get chased scene. by Monster Man again, and yep, the dead the body falling on him. Dead body falls on him. He get the car gets crushed, and he's going ah, I'm a corpse burrito, and it's just bleeding on him. Like I'm laughing, I'm laughing at this point because I'm like, this is a great movie. It's so stupid, and it's making me laugh. So they pull him out, and now this is where the what was her name? Amy? Amy. I, Amy wait, I think that might that might be the actress's name. Actress's name. No, I think it was Amy. Amy sounds right. We can yes. edit it later and pretend like we should we speak. It was Diane. Becky. Uh, Bethany. Becky. Becky. Rose. Danielle. De- De- Cindy. Snow. Carla. Nobody's named Car- Car- you never meet a Carla anymore. Carla, I feel like Carly, um, but no Carlas. I feel like Carla is like in her forties, and she's yeah. uh, she. It's her night out. Like husband's at home, we're fucking drinking. Let's drink some Pinot. <laughs> yeah, but then Carla, Carla is also gonna like at ten forty five. She's like, I'm out. I'm going. You, you girls are great. I'm going home. And she touches the Love face. You. She touches the face of the bartender. She leaves. You're cute. You're, you're cute. You're cute. Well, I like you. Yeah. <laughs> I like you. So she gets taken to this house, and this is where... Oh, yeah, no, no, sorry, they're, they're getting chased through the woods. Chased through the woods. The Monster Man is really fast, apparently, because he just catches up to him, no problem. Uh, slams Harley into a tree, kills him. I knew he wasn't dead. I was like, he can't be dead. He's not dead. Come on. But he looked dead. He looked pretty dead. She runs, and then... I think it was necessary for, you mm-hmm, know... For the story. It had to for, be... Yeah, yeah. We had to believe He's it. obviously dead. <laughs> <coughs> I'm still done. Pardon me. So Amy runs. Adam chases after, loses her, and then um, I don't know how the hell. I can't remember how he tracks her to the place he gets taken to, but he just ends up there. This old farmhouse where she's tied up inside. He gets inside, and this is where we meet this uh, her brother, brother Fred, the corpse, the talking corpse. This the was talking, so weird. Half corpse, the the top half of the body. He's like, welcome. <laughs> First, I thought it was animatronic, just some sort of weird robot. He's like, welcome, friend. Welcome to the house. And like, he freaks out, runs into the next room, finds Amy, starts to untie her. And they, I'm like, you're going to get out. You're going to get out here. You got her untied. But they start making out instead. I'm like, dude, that's a rookie move. You're going to get trapped in here. Yeah, that was, that was a little odd. It didn't it seem very odd. Well, I mean, you know, but, you know. But she and she just turns on him. She's like, "Oh, we got we got you now." Her accent changes because now she's from the south. And you're like, "Yeah, this." I'm like, "I should have known. I should have known she was in on it, but I didn't. I was totally tricked by her." So wait, how did she get tied up then? Well, brother, brother Bob, the monster man, took her from the woods there and tied her up in the house. Oh right. But then how does he only have a half body when he's inside? So wait, so there's Brother Fred. Brother Fred's the corpse. Oh wait, Brother Fred's the brother, corpse. Brother, brother Bob. Bob is the monster man. Right. And then there's Sister Amy. Right. But then Brother Bob isn't there. No, because he was in there and then he left. He went outside <laughs> for some reason. And then when when Adam because... ran into the room together, that's when Fred was like, Brother Bob, they're here. And then Brother Bob came running back in and was like, oh, shit, time crash. we got to get out of here. Yeah. And then he almost gets her untied, and then she's like, ha, ha, we got you. That's right. And then it's like, I think they knock him out, and then when he comes to, he's in the vice, just like the guy at the front. That's, okay. Now, yeah. this is a question. Here's a question. 
the guy who got murdered at the start, we never see him again, and we don't know if he was like, was he a, a leg or a foot or a face or what was he yeah. for the corpse? Because they were they were using satanic magic to harvest the parts of people from the neighborhood. As you do. Yeah, as well, yeah. It's what you do when your brother gets run over by the other brother. If you're going to leave, you know, keep a corpse alive, you're going to need some satanic <laughs> magic, I would guess. Eh? Introducing satanic magic, <laughs> now available on Amazon. It's, you know, it was like, I'm assuming he got really crushed. So I don't know how you bring back a, a pile of guts, I guess. I don't know. I'm not up on my satanic worship. <laughs> Satan, <laughs> satanic magic. I haven't oh, refreshed right. on it lately, you know, not since the early 90s. when it, that, but, was, that was popular. Now, I didn't, you're a little younger than me. We talked about this. You're like seven years younger than me, yeah. which is, we're still pretty, there's a lot of, like, do you remember, <coughs> pardon me, how, like, Satanism was much more of a concern when we were younger? Yes. Like, do you, <clears throat> I don't know if I, <laughs> I feel like no one, you know, like, the, now it's kind of, like, Satanism has gone from being a serious problem to pretty much totally laughable. Mm -hmm. Like It's up there with quicksand, and uh, <laughs> what was the other thing I was thinking of? Too? I was but yet, of else today. yet I'm, like, I'm a little afraid of it still. Maybe because I grew up with it, or maybe because I do kind of a little bit believe in like real evil is out there. Well, like dude, I think there's there's you know what I think I, I'm a little bit of a, a a believer, like not a believer, like I I can't stand uh, people who I don't know. I just have ideas, but not beliefs, you know, I, I don't really want to connect myself to anyone. Cause then as soon as you, people are like, you believe in God. I'm like, no, but I, I don't, I don't know. Like <laughs> it seems as likely as anything as, as well as likely as total nothingness. All of it seems just as likely to me. So I'm not really in a position to judge, but I, but I a little bit feel like there is some, you know, like I'm, I, I, I still have those times when I walk, you know, like I'm, I'm 46. I'm six foot, well, three, I think, six foot three, whatever, 200 pounds. I'm pretty big. People, don't, but like when I'm alone at night in the forest, it's dark, <laughs> you know? And I get a little scared, you know, especially, especially if you get high, you know? Yeah. And then you're like, but what if Satan, you know, what if the devil, you know, or someone's going to murder me like right now? And I'm like, that's preposterous. Here's, like, a, here's a conspiracy theory I've thought up. <coughs> We've got it all backwards. God's the evil one, the devil's the savior. Well, or we see, look at dude, look at how many people have been murdered in the name of God. Look how many people like like we got to find these devil worshippers and kill them but in the name mean, of God. Does that mean God's evil, or does that mean people are evil? People are evil. And We're terrible. That's what I because I was yeah. It's not really say like you know get into the philosophy stuff again about whether God and Satan are really just part of two parts of the same energy, you know, it's just a <laughs> big orb and glowing power of the universe. And how you can, you know, I feel like you got to get in the Southern accent. We got just to the, talk about I, God. We got to talk about God. Have you been saved, my son? Have you been saved by God? But yeah, no, you know, because I get scared still. I'm a good, there's no rational reason. <laughs> and I like, you know, like when you're in bed and like, you're, you're like, someone might be coming to murder me. So I'll pull the covers over my head because <laughs> you, why? Cause I just want to, yeah. Right. But it happens once in a while that you're like, <clears throat> and they always say that's like, it's like ghost walking over your grave or like, you know, or people walking over your grave. That's what they call it. Someone just walk. That's an old saying, right? Like why Johnny Ringo. Somebody just walked over your grave. So the, all the foreshadowing. Back to the movie. All the foreshadowing from the start. His tiny pencil. What was the other thing that he used here? Because he, oh yeah, yeah, the pocket knife. His little, his little uh, Swiss oh, Army knife. Yes. Because he gets that loose, but then she takes it. But he's managed to get his pencil sharpener. He spins the razor on his pencil sharpener. Wah! Slashes her throat. She's toast. And then he stabs Brother Bob in the eye with his little tiny black book pencil, which is hilarious. Stab both eyes, blinds Bob. That's hardcore. And then they have a little, like, he's like, I know you're See, quiet, and I'm going to find you. We, we're learning a lot. I think Adam is a really good kisser. Ace killer. Shags I think. like a minx. I hope I didn't say that out loud just now. <laughs> Hours, last hours. Yeah, yeah, three hours, easy. Easy, easy, three hours, easy. First time, three hours. <laughs> so a little, little pencil, and then uh, I love the line, when he kills, he kills Fred. How does he kill Fred? 
No, he doesn't kill. Oh, well, he thinks he kills Fred, and he goes, "Drop dead, Fred." Oh, yeah, but then he ends up driving because he gets so scared that he drives over him for about five hours. Oh, that's brother Bob. He crushes. Oh, that's brother, brother Bob. Bob. He crushes brother Bob till the sun comes up. That's right. Which is amazing. Oh, because <laughs> Harley is still dead. Oh, he also okay. He doesn't kill Bob yet. He well, yeah, lures, we still don't see Harley yet. Nope. He's he's he lures Bob with his he got bleeding. Knocked out. He lures Bob with his bleeding nose. He's like, oh, I can smell your blood and I'll never blast. So he lures him over to the big spike on the wall, like yeah. the hooker story. And he impales him on that thing. And then he runs outside and Bob follows him. Like, Bob is still kicking. This guy's tough. And then that's when Harley comes in, crushes him with the truck. And he's like, hey, call the Academy. Great acting. That's right. You want to get in this thing? And then runs him back, runs him over him back and forth till the sun comes up. He's like, okay, I think we got him. And then uh, they take off. And they never explain... <laughs> Why Harley was like he's just back. They never go well, over he, that. He did. They? He just said he was playing. He was acting. That's why he said, "Call the Academy because I want the Academy Award oh. nominated for the Oscar because I was playing that perfectly. I knew he was the whole like, time. Dead, whole time. Well, until they left. While that scene. his friend was. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, like you could say he did take a while to get there, but he honestly yeah. didn't know where he was going. So nah, you got to yeah. give the guy credit. Yeah, that's true. He managed to get there, steal the truck without them hearing it, drive it around and wait for Bob to come outside because he knew Bob was going to come outside. Didn't even go inside. I don't know if that's a good friend or not. Didn't even go inside to check on him. Hmm. Mine, yeah. Well, you know, who's to, who are we to judge? Have that's we true. ever been... Uh, I've never been I've never situation. been, like, kidnapped and then, you know, had friends of mine assumed murdered and um, had... Yeah, it's, it's not... Okay, that's it probably The real, you know... If this happened to you in real life, it would be a horse. This is not good. You don't want this to happen to you. No. no. That's why it makes a great movie. I would still pick up that hitchhiker, though. I think, which is why we're, we're goners. We, we yeah. We're, we're, if, we're you dead. know, that's like, I mean, it's going to happen. Like, the trend has been male serial killers for years. And you know that there's, you know, going to be it, like... Maybe it's a lady cutting those feet off. Could be, you know... We never know. Great ass! My if my girlfriend's the uh, shoe killer. I'm I'm a goner. She can, you know, she maybe that's the key. Is it? She's like a year. That's what I'm know, thinking. Develops a close relationship they and play then the long game. Yeah, and they, they slip up once. They're like, oh, I got my reason. Well, that's no. So, so that's a like a <clears throat> another one of these rabbit holes. You know, when <laughs> watching shitty food shows and looking on my phone about um, the I, I got into the whole rabbit hole of uh, uh, serial killers. That um, most male serial serial killers, you know, they they kill strangers, right? And that's the predominant. And most female cel- serial killers, or just female murderers, usually know like it's usually a close mm-hmm. relationship. So they, yeah, they know like because women have reasons to kill. <laughs> Men have reasons to kill, but women have reasons to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like men just go, they're just like I can just kill anybody. But women are like. You're dead, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm going to kill you for what you just said. <laughs> Damn it. You're like, okay. You know, that's, well, and fair, fair enough. You know, if you piss someone off enough that they want to murder you, maybe that's, you know, like, you, well, not that it should happen, but I mean. If you, you know, deserve it, then. Good I'm not, effort, I'm not eh? Bad for you. And then that's the end of this movie. And that's the talking end. guts and a talking corpse. He's like, I can't fuck my sister now. Credits roll. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, because weird. his lips still <laughs> talk. So he's killed them for five yeah. hours. So Brother Bob's lips are still moving in the pile of guts. He's like, you can't kill me. You can't kill me. I'm like, what the hell? And then we, sh- we do, it's like the credits start to roll. Then it's like Brother Fred on the floor going, what am I going to do now? I can't fuck my sister. And then it credits roll again. I'm like, whoa, what a weird way to end it. Really, the uh, the movie is is kind of Harley's treatise on redneck Southern culture and how they're all just a bunch of sister fucking Satan worshiping. You know? um, do you have a real rating for this? I have a real rating for this. Because I gave it seven and a half truck stop glory holes out of ten backseat dead bodies. Oh, yeah. Because I, I, you know what? I was pleasantly surprised. I was expecting a big old turd, and it was pretty good. It was surprisingly good. It had its moments where you're like, what the hell? It doesn't make any sense, or this writing's kind of shitty. But for the most part, it was fun. I laughed a lot, and it wasn't as bad as I thought. Yeah, I would give it a, uh, like a, a bartender rating of like three with the lights on, eight with the lights out. That's hmm. what this movie is nice. like. Yeah. I like it. And the lights are definitely out. So it's so it got an eight, you know. Is yeah, it's a three 
compared to like what good movies are. But in its own genre, this is one of the best shitty movies I've seen. Amen. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. All right. Okay, everybody. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Or hit the dislike button. Leave a comment down below. YouTube likes that for the algorithm, all that stuff. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, and that's about the it. The streets. <laughs> yeah. If you see Jeff, we'll just start following him. <laughs> yeah, just start walking by me. It's cool. Yeah. All right. Dave, thank you so, so much for coming down. Thanks, do man. This, this is right a blast. On. We'll have you on again soon. We'll do this. We should do, um, uh, I, I think I've said it before, and I don't know if you've already, we should do Vampire's Kiss. The, yes. The Nicolas Cage one. Ooh. Is, uh, oh, it's... It's uh, it's epically good, bad as well. We're rolling through a lot of Nicholas Cage these days, so it's, oh, yeah. it's on the list. I love he's, it. it's cl- I mean, come he's on. He's just Cage. He's, he's just himself. He's Cage. He's a man, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence. No, we're going to steal the Declaration of Independence. National treasure. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Guys and gals, thank you so much for listening and watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give me a follow. Hit like, hit dislike. Doesn't matter. Either way, the algorithm loves it. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Real garbage.